Hey moviegoers, this is the Movie Critic, and welcome back to another movie review. Today, the movie I'm going to be reviewing is a new video game adaptation titled... As you can see, today's setup is going to be a little bit different. I'm kind of experimenting with things, and also I don't have a ring light and a stand for my phone right now, but... Mostly this is experimenting and I just want to see how this goes. So bear with me please. Before we get into the review, make sure to smack that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell on the sides to get information on videos in the near future. Now that I got that out of the way, let's get into the review for Five Nights at Freddy's. And action! Struggling to take care of his 10-year-old sister, Abby, on his own, the generally undependable Mike Schmidt is low on options when he lands this new job as a night nice security guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria to pay the bills. Mike quickly realizes, however, that the night nice shift at Freddy's won't be as kickback as he was thinking after he makes a disturbing discovery. That the pizza places four horrifying animatronic mascots all apparently come alive. Starting off with the things that I liked, the first thing that I liked about this film was its set design. This doesn't necessarily go for all of the sets in this film, but I really wanted to talk about the design of the pizzeria. I liked it a lot, and it really did seem like a lot of care was put into the creation of this specific set. The set designer for the film was Mark Fisichella, and scrolling through his IMDb for this review, I found out that he was also the production manager for Maze Runner, which automatically makes him even cooler in my book. But anyways, Mark really did put a lot of detail into the pizzeria and the security room, and it's probably one of my favorite film sets from this year. Going to the second thing that I liked about this film, the second thing that I liked was its cinematography. While it was simplistic, I felt there were some good camera choices and transitions throughout this film. The lighting was subtle when necessary and vibrant when necessary, and the camera angle and movements were decent enough. The cinematographer for this film was Lynn Moncrief, and while his catalog isn't as... How would you say, consistent? I can say that he did a pretty nice job with this movie. The camera work is anything but lazy. Going to the third thing that I liked about this film, the third thing that I liked was the acting. The acting performances in this film were surprisingly good for a live action video game adaptation to be honest. To start things off, the boy of most of our childhoods, Josh Hutcherson, plays Mike Schmidt who is the main protagonist of this film and he did a great job as always. His child co-star Piper Rubio who plays Abby who is Mike's sister was also great in her role and I really like their sibling bond. It's hard to find good child actors nowadays but she is proof that they are still out there roaming around in the Hollywood space. Moving on, the last third of the protagonist in this film is a police officer named Vanessa who is portrayed by Elizabeth Lale, and she's a very, very, uh, hear me out guys. Elizabeth Lale does a great job portraying Vanessa, a character that FNAF fans are familiar with from the franchise's newest game, Security Breach. I believe she did the character justice and has won the hearts of fans and my. Lastly, I need to talk about Matthew Lillard as Steve Raglan. I am a huge fan of the guy, and while his iteration of Shaggy and James Gunn's Scooby-Doo films is my first impression of him, his performance as Stu in Scream is top 
notch. You can tell that he unleashes inner stew for this role and he knocks it out of the park. All in all, everyone did a good job. Going into the last thing that I liked about this film, the last thing that I liked was the film's practical effects. It's awesome that the iconic animatronics Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and Freddy were created by the goats of puppetry and animatronics themselves, Jim Henson's Creature Shop. From their facial expressions to their eye colors, the animatronics were full of life and made me smile a lot whenever they were on screen. While making the characters practical caused some sort of limitations when it comes to having them run from one place to another, everything else was honestly very impressive. Going into the things that I didn't like. The first thing that I didn't like about this film was the cramming of lore. In the realm of FNAF, there is a lot of lore that goes into the games and books that were created to expand the world of said games. With the amount of lore that FNAF has, one would believe that a film adaptation would try to rope in new fans who aren't necessarily familiar with the lore by taking a somewhat simplistic approach while making sure to have a few mentions of lore for diehard fans. That way, it could be a win-win situation for both viewers. What the film did instead was mix together different areas of FNAF lore. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Making the lore delivery a little messy in my opinion. There was a lot that I believe this film wanted to say, but honestly, there were some things that could have been explored in a sequel film. Going to the last thing I didn't like about the film, the last thing I didn't like was the lack of horror. The FNAF film falls into the genre of horror due to the adaptation being of a horror game. While the movie has horror-esque elements, I don't think it uses those elements to their advantage. Most of the jump scares in this film felt cheap, and while I'm glad there were jump scares in this film, because the games are basically known for their jump scares alone, <laughs> They lacked tension. The movie to me felt more like a supernatural mystery film than horror and when they tried to become a horror film, it only did so much. It felt like there were limitations. Which leads me into the things I noticed. The first thing that I noticed about this film was its rating. The film's rating was PG-13, making it accessible to people under 18. One constant thing that I heard from people online is that the film should have been rated R so that there would be more gore in scenes where it was necessary. While that would have been cool, I feel the film being PG-13 was a smart move on the developers as a lot of the FNAF fandom is mostly made up of 13 to 17 year old kids. Sure. There are college students like me who are fans, but at the end of the day, kids gobble this series up. Also, there are ways to use boundaries as a stepping stone to create something unique. The film just decided not to do that. Going to the second thing that I noticed, the second thing that I noticed in the film was its references. There are a lot of references and some cameos that cater to the series as a whole. If you're a fan, you'll probably lose your mind and point your fingers at the screen Leonardo DiCaprio style. But to an average viewer, you'll sit around confused as to why people are reacting to certain things that are happening in the film. For me, I understood a few references and mentally jumped for joy whenever I saw a cameo, so I had a good time. But all in all, if you get it, then you get it. If you don't, you don't. Going to the third thing that I noticed about the film, the third thing that I noticed was its plot. The plot for what it is, is fine and serviceable for the general audience despite the FNAF lore being all over the place. I feel that they just had the Night Guard vs. Animatronics plotline with some of the lore sprinkled in just a bit for it to be explored in the sequel. It would have been cool, but <laughs> what do I know? I'm just a movie review channel with 150 subs. Let's bump that number up guys, subscribe if you haven't already. Getting into the last thing that I noticed, the last thing that I noticed about the film was its reception. On Rotten Tomatoes, the tomato meter for this film is 31% while the audience score is 
This exact situation reminds me of another video game film adaptation that came out this year. The Super Mario Brothers movie. And just like the Mario movie, the film made a good amount of money in the box office the weekend it came out. The film's budget was $20 million, and the film made a total of $130 million, giving it the biggest opening weekend worldwide for a horror movie this year. While it didn't make nearly as much as the Mario film, the film was still seen as a financial success despite the critics not liking what was presented. This is a win for fans who want more films in the near future, and a win for developers as they can take what they've learned from this movie and construct an even better story for the sequel. Well, only one could hope. Five Nights at Freddy's is a film adaptation that is definitely for the fans of this extremely beloved video game series. With amazing set design, decent cinematography, solid acting performances from our main cast of characters, and phenomenal practical effects work on the animatronics, it awards fans with a film that has the love of the game spring trapped into it. However, the film does suffer from having too much lore crammed into one film and for not being able to capitalize off of the one thing that the game is infamously known for. It's horror. Some blame the film's rating for this, but I am a firm believer in using boundaries as the basis of creating something extraordinary. When it comes to the references made in this film and the plot itself, critics and viewers who are not fans of the games possibly will not find anything about this movie interesting. And that's okay. The film was still successful because of the fan base that has been waiting for this film ever since it was first announced in 2015. That was eight years ago, what the- Yeah. It's a miracle that this movie was even made and that it was successful enough to possibly get a sequel. An argument can be made that the eight years of waiting was not worth it, but I do believe there is a lot of potential that can be explored in the future. As for now, the movie is good enough for me and the fans, but it can reach the general public someday. On the mental status ranking, I give Five Nights at Freddy's a gold status. And that's the review for Five Nights at Freddy's. It's long overdue, I know, but... Things have been very busy for me, especially in October as a whole. There was plans that I had. I had the whole channel update where I said I was going to put out reviews in October and November. But let's be honest, none of you guys looked at the channel update, which is fine. I'm kind of glad no one really did because it would have had a lot of pressure on me if people looked and they were like, Hey, you said you were going to do this. Why didn't you do this? Blah, 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 blah. So I'm glad I didn't have that pressure. I know this is late, but better late than never. And I'm glad that I put it out. And once again, I'm just trying something new um, by not recording on camera and seeing how this works out. And yeah, hopefully the editing is able to keep you guys interested in what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, that's... Basically, what I wanted to do, I just wanted to try something out and see how it goes. So, hopefully it went well. I do have some plans in the near future for, like, a few films that I want to review that I know I will review. So, just be on the lookout for those. And, of course, when it gets close to the end of the year, my top 10 best movies of 2023, that will be out. The Christmas season is officially here. Thanksgiving is gone. And now it's time to... Listen to Christmas music, get ready to go out and buy presents maybe, make sure that your house is festive, put up some Christmas lights, and set up your Christmas tree if you do, and just get ready for Christmas. It's going to be a great Christmas season, I believe, and I hope you guys are having a great one so far. But I think that's it. Have a great day or night for ever you are moviegoers. This is a movie critic, and that's a wrap.